Hi everyone and welcome to another ready to ride Pilates for horse rider session. This is going to be all about multitasking. Let's face it, riding a horse is multitasking all of the time. Sometimes you've got arms both doing different things, legs both doing different things, body trying to do something else in the middle. So we're going to start off with some easy ones and then I'm going to give you the hard version of each one if there is a hard version. So depending on what level you're at you can gauge the exercise level that you do. These are all going to be lying down ones to Day, but I've got some other standing up ones that we'll do on another day. So we are going to start off on your side and we're going to do an exercise called the side bend. You need to be in the capital L position, so shoulders, hips, knees in a straight line, knees bent to 90 degrees and your forearm propped underneath you. Obviously if you get a sore shoulder don't push this one too hard. So the first level of doing this top arm resting on your side, activate your pelvic floor onto floor three and you're simultaneously lifting your pelvis as you take your top arm above your head. And that's it, nice and simple. But what you're looking for is that synchronization of pelvic movement and the arm movement. Also keeping that pelvic floor consistently working the whole way through and making sure as always that you are keeping breathing. If you find that quite easy, you can make it a little harder by lifting your top leg. So you have to work the muscles on the leg that's lifting, work that a little bit harder. To add to the coordination side of things, you can then straighten your top leg as you go. So now you're thinking of lifting, arm and top leg, all doing something slightly different, all at the same time and still using pelvic floor and still breathing. So there's quite a lot of different components going on. We'll do one more. Okay, we're going to turn onto your front next. I'm going to do an exercise called swimming. Um, a lot of Pilates exercises have slightly strange names. Um, don't ask me what. So we're going to start off the easy version, which is with your arms out in front. And I'd like you to be looking face down. I'm going to look at you so that you can see me. To start off with, you want to be just thinking of tummy away from the puddle of water and pelvic floor onto floor three. Then you are lifting one hand and reaching away as far as you can. Then you lift the other hand and reach away as far as you can. So it's as simple as that. Lift, reach, lift, reach. And you want to feel that you're stretching down each side as you do this. When you've got the hang of the arms, you do the same thing with your legs. So again, before you start, check tummy position, pelvic floor, float one leg and stretch it away. Float the other leg, stretch it away. And as you do your float and stretch, you really want to feel that the headlight on that side that you are floating and stretching is reaching away from you, sliding away along the mat. If you can't feel your headlights particularly well, don't worry. You just want to feel that area of your body reaching and stretching. Then we're going to combine the two. So you're going to check tummy position and pelvic floor, float a diagonal pair of arm and leg and stretch them away from each other. Rest them back down again, float the opposite pair and stretch them away, then rest back down. So you keep alternating left and right arms with opposite legs. You should still be trying to feel that little bit of a slide through your headlight on each side as you do this, but it will be a little bit less because you're being pulled in the opposite direction by your arm. Now, I've put out some balls. The challenge for doing this to increase the coordination is to change the movement. So you're going to pop, again, diagonal pairs, but you're resting them onto the balls. Again, to start off with its tummy away from the puddle of water and pelvic floor onto floor three, straighten your elbow and your knee, and then you're rolling the balls out and rolling them in. So you're doing the same movement because they're both going out, but they're actually going in opposite directions. Still keeping your tummy in neutral, pelvic floor onto floor three, make sure you're breathing and keep your elbows and knees straight. So I often find people will say this is one of the hardest exercises to do simply because there are so many different components. Really, really simple, but so many different components. Arms and legs are going in opposite directions. Elbows and knees are straight. Tummy away from the puddle of water, pelvic floor onto floor three. So we'll swap and do the same thing with the other pair. So again, before you start, tummy away from the puddle of water, pelvic floor onto floor three. Straight elbow, straight knee, roll out, roll in. Really simple, roll out, roll in, 
but make sure the balls are going in the opposite direction to each other. So they're both going out, both coming in, but they're going in the opposite direction. Keep your elbows straight, keep your knees straight, and keep your pelvic floor onto floor three. Tummy away from the puddle of water, and most of all, keep breathing. Whatever you do, keep breathing. If you're holding your breath, you're bracing with your diaphragm. Okay, we'll do a couple more of this one. Lovely job. Okay, let's move the balls out of the way. And we're going to move on to an exercise called the one leg kick, which is a very simple exercise when you first look at it, but actually it can get really quite complicated. So if you are doing this at home, rest your head onto your headrest, that's absolutely fine. I'm going to stay looking at you so that you can hear me. We're going to start off with one leg doing a simple version. So again, before you start, tummy away from the puddle, pelvic floor onto floor three. And you start off doing three little pulses and straighten, bend the other knee, and it's three pulses, one, two, three, and straighten. If you want it, and it helps, count your pulses out. I'm terrible, as I said before, at counting and talking at the same time. So far, so simple, provided you are keeping your tummy away from the puddle of water and your pelvic floor onto floor three. We're going to make it harder. We're going to add in some foot positioning. So you bend, and with each pulse, you change your foot position. So you either go heel, toe, heel, or toe, heel, toe. And if you're going to really challenge yourself, I suggest you do heel, toe, heel, and again, heel, toe, heel, and then go toe, heel, toe, and toe, heel, toe. So you've got to really keep an eye on what you did the time before and see if you can remember. So I'm getting confused already. To be honest, it doesn't really matter. The main thing here is that you keep going with your pulses, keep thinking, change foot position, but also don't forget about what's happening around your headlights. So we've talked about at the start, keeping your headlights, um, keeping your tummy, sorry, away from the puddle of water. But also while you're doing this, uh, you want to be careful that you're doing little pulses, not big kicks. If you're doing big kicks, what's gonna happen is you're going to pull your headlights away from the floor each time you do a kick. So you want to be doing little gentle pulses and that will help you keep those headlights in contact with the floor and make sure that you are doing this from the hips. So that's a really nice, uh, quite complicated one that you can do. It's also really good if you've had problems with your hamstrings, if you've had sciatic problems. Okay, we're now going to go onto your other side and do your side bend again. So once again, back into your capital L position, shoulders, hips and knees and knees bent. Arm underneath you pelvic floor onto floor three and we're starting off with the easy version so that's lifting your pelvis arm over your head and back down pelvic floor lift and back down again making sure you're still breathing and looking for that nice simultaneous movement pelvis and arm then if you want to make it a little harder keeping the top leg elevated so now you've added that component of making it harder because you've only got one leg and then if you want to make it harder still, we will add in the extra dynamic component of straightening the top leg as you go. So you're still keeping pelvic floor onto floor three and you're breathing. But now you are moving pelvis, arm and top leg all together. Good job. We'll do a couple more of this one. Okay, lovely. Right, we're now going to go onto your back. And we're going to start off with an exercise called the double leg stretch. And it's a bit of a silly one because it's called double leg. It uses both legs, but it also uses your arms. And we're going to start with your arms pointing to the ceiling, or the sky in my case. Pelvic floor onto floor three, neutral tummy position. And check your feet and knees are hip width apart. You're then going to straighten one leg as your arms go above your head. And then bring everything back up together. Same the other side. So you're alternating which leg is on the move, arms doing the same thing together. As you're doing this, as well as the usual pelvic floor and a nice neutral tummy position, you need to be thinking about the ropes between ribs and pelvis, because if you let them go, you're going to find that your ribs pop up towards the ceiling instead of staying anchored down. There's quite a lot of components to think about. If you want to make it harder, you can add in a circle with your arms. You don't want to make the circle too huge, 
but you want to time the circle so that it matches with the leg. So you circle out and in. The out is with the leg going straight, in with the leg coming back up. Still keeping pelvic floor, neutral pelvis, ropes and breathing. So that's quite a few things. If you find this easy, you can take it up into your tabletop position. So you would start the whole process from here and it's exactly the same. Still pelvic floor, neutral pelvis and your ropes, making sure you're still breathing. Okay, lovely job. Let's bring feet down and bring your arms back down. Okay, so we're going to now combine two leg exercises to make things a little bit more complicated. I have to say, I do find this easier from the tabletop position, it's just the way my brain works, but you might find this easier from the foot down position. Once again, your starting position is neutral pelvis, pelvic floor onto floor three. Activate through those ropes so that your ribs don't start to dome upwards and make sure you're breathing. We're going to combine your scissors with your hip twist. So by that, you're going to bring one leg up into scissors while you take, or tabletop really, while the other leg goes out into hip twist and then both back together. So it will look like this. So your legs are basically doing two completely different things. This is a real brain scrambler. I suggest that you have your hands onto your headlights because then you'll get that really good feedback about whether your headlights are staying nice and still. If you want to make this harder, as I said, you can do it from tabletop. And what I suggest you do here is you take one leg down to, to the floor while the other leg goes out and back up and so on. So you're alternating which leg is doing which movement. Once again, using your hands onto your headlights so that you've got that feedback about what your pelvis is up to using your pelvic floor still, engaging through your ropes and making sure that you are breathing. Do one more. Okay, and then keep back down. And there we are. I'm not going to do any more. I think that's quite enough in terms of getting your brain in gear for doing some coordination exercises. Like I said, I will be doing a more standing based session because that might be a little bit more practical. But I think the more you train your brain off the horse for doing coordination in terms of arms and legs doing all sorts of different things, easier it'll be when you're on the horse and you're in that same situation. So I hope that's been useful. I hope those principles are really useful. Um, if you haven't already, please do subscribe and I will look forward to seeing you at the next session. Thank you and take care.